So I just got asked if I had a basic blog post for installing um, TFS 2013. I realized that I hadn't really done a, a basic out of the box install um, since probably 2010. Most of the time I've been doing upgrades. So on my surface, I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Um, I already have a domain controller running. Now, we need to set this um, at a minimum of 2048 for memory. I'm going to use dynamic memory, so I only use as much as I need once the machine is running. Um, but TFS does a check uh, for the amount of memory in a machine. Um, and if this isn't set to 2048, we'll not be able to install TFS. So that's the minimum you need, but it can be actually less uh, based on dynamic memory. Private. Let me select. Now I'm going to use uh, Windows Server 2012 R2. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm going to start this machine. Well, I was going to connect to it and then start it. Now this is just going to do a, a basic vanilla install of Windows. I will need to go and get a key. Let me do that while we're waiting. Oh. Awesome. So I'm just going to use um, Windows Server 2012 R2 standard and paste in my key. There we go. So we don't want a core installation. TFS is not currently supported on core. Um, it mostly works. There's just a, a couple of things uh, that don't particularly around build servers. Um, so I'm going to pick with a GUI. Now I obviously can't upgrade. It's a blank install. So and I just do that. There we go. That's going to copy the uh, files, do the install. Uh, reboot and that will get going. So now that we have it installed, wait, it just took a minute, not time to go and get a coffee. Okay. So that's me logging in for the first time. Yep, and now I can get a proper resolution. Awesome. If you're using Windows 8.1 and uh, uh, Server uh, 2012 R2, you get this enhanced session mode that allows you to not only copy paste, uh, but set the resolution a little bit more nicely and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty good. So if you've used Server or Server uh, any of the newer server versions. That will figure itself out in a minute. You will know that it just picks a random computer name and you have to change it. So I don't really want that as the computer name. So I'm going to change that. Baltar. And I'm going to have to reboot that uh, first before I do anything else. Give it a sec. There we go. So now we have a machine called Baltar. Let me just check the settings in there because I think the network is Ah, see, I've just got it set as private and one processor. Uh, let me change that over to Wi-Fi. But I will need private as well. Okay, so let me just quickly... Uh, where's the... Shut this down. There we go. Change the settings. Uh, I'm going to go two processors. 
I'm going to add a network adapter in my private network. There we go. That should make it one run a little bit faster and uh, two be able to connect to the private network. Awesome. Okay, I need to set up my private network. And put these. Let me just do um, Okay, so now I have that set up, I should be able to change my work group. To inf.nickdlm.com I should find my domain, should find my domain. Um, and we should be good. Uh, I want to do the install on a domain because that's more uh, uh, a, a better example of what people would do in the field. Uh, most people don't install TFS in a work group, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. Just give that a minute to join. Here we go. And uh, we just need to do a quick restart, and then we can install TFS. Perfect. Now all we need to do is install TFS. So let me insert the TFS disk. This is just the RTM of a Team Foundation server. So this is a completely blank server. We've just joined it to a domain. We don't have anything else installed on it. And you may want to install SQL Server to get the full version of, uh, of SQL Server. And TFS actually includes a license for SQL Server standard. And um, so you can just install that and you don't need an additional license as long as it's only used for TFS. Um, but I'm just going to continue with Express. And TFS will install at SQL Express as part of the, the installation once we go get to the configuration part. So um, the first part of the TFS installation just gets all the files on disk, registers all of the, the, the DLLs, and does all of those um, local PCs that you need to do. But it's not going to um, install any of the third party tools. It's not going to configure anything yet. We're going to do that in a minute. There we go, in just a few minutes, it's installed TFS. I'm just going to do a trial install just now. Let me activate that. There we go. And I get my standard installation wizard. Now there's a number of options here. Um, the standard server, um, if you want to use default instance of SQL Server, um, but this will not work for uh, um, SQL Express and won't configure reporting services and the reporting PCs for you. We have a, a advanced where you can configure um, all of the, the SQL Server databases, SharePoint, um, SQL Server, and also services, reporting services, all of those uh, uh, PCs very easily. And I'm actually just going to take a basic install. So this is going to install SQL Express. 
it's going to um, configure work item tracking, build services, source control, all of those things are going to be configured for us and up and running at the end, um, but we won't have um, a, a, anything else. We won't have SharePoint integration, we won't have reporting services integration, and, and we can't do any kind of non-standard configurations with this mode. So let me just start the wizard. And the first thing it's going to do is I'm going to install SQL Express. And it's going to go in a way and check my system and make sure everything's running okay. So this is going to check for prerequisites. It's going to check to make sure uh, that it can install stuff. There can always be something extra that goes wrong, but it does a pretty good job of checking the system requirements. So you can see everything's okay. It's also going to install uh, IIS, fancy name for IIS, um, and make sure everything's good. So if I click configure, it's going to go off and do that. It will take a few minutes specifically for con configuring IIS, installing um, SQL Express. It will take a little bit longer than everything else. Um, but it should only take a few minutes. Awesome, so we've got an install. It's complete, and we can just go to, hopefully, I will like need to log in. Come if I can type. There we go, connected to TFS. I currently have one collection with no team projects, so I will need to set that up, but I don't have Visual Studio on here, so I will do that later. And there you go, installing and configuring TFS, very straightforward, um, on a basic server configuration.